Kerry Nasai. Welcome back. For the ones of you who don't know me, I'm Lucy and I'm a certified sake sommelier. Now, the last few weeks, we've kind of been drifting away from the topic of classical sake further and further. And today I would like to take a bold step and touch up on the topic of umeshu. Now, I think umeshu as a product might be a little more approachable for us Westerners. It's really delicious. It's sweet. It has very easily definable flavors and it reminds us of products that we know, uh, our dessert wines, port wines. And uh, umeshu, the word umeshu is, can be divided into two parts, ume, which means plum, and shu, which you might remember means alcohol. Ume are not really the same kind of plum that we're used to eating in Europe or in America. They are greenish yellow, even yellowish red when really ripe. And they have a lot more acidity than our plums. And they're supposed to be very good for your health. And already in the 10th century, there is a note about the Emperor Murakami who suffered from illness. And he was given a tea made with umeboshi and kombu. Yeah. Um, and he got well. I'm pretty sure if someone gave me a tea made with umeboshi and kombu, I would also get well, just so I wouldn't have to drink any more of it. Yeah. Anyway, ume are widely used in, uh, in Japanese cooking as well, not only as umeboshi, and they're considered the oldest seasoning next to salt. Umeshu is really easy to make. It contains ume, sugar, and alcohol. And the alcohol can be more or less anything from sake, through shochu, to brandy or rum. And umeshu makers experiment with this quite a lot and make some really fun products. Uh, I've had a Kimoto umeshu that has been absolutely delicious. There is umeshu made with rum. It really differs. It's a very, very diverse product. So just because you've had one umeshu doesn't mean you know it all. And since it's at Easy, as easy to make as it is. People, of course, have been making umeshu at home for the longest time. And this is nowadays legally allowed in Japan, as long as the alcohol that you use to make your home umeshu isn't too, too weak. It has to be at least 20%. This is because of contamination. Yeah. And you, you make your umeshu for your own consumption. So you, you're not allowed to sell it, but you're allowed to make it. Even restaurants are actually allowed to make umeshu under the same premises. There is a limit on how much umeshu they are allowed to make. And there have actually been a couple of scandals uh, on the Japanese TV where like celebrities and celebrity chefs have been making their own umeshu with things like mirin or sake. And that is basically teaching people how to make moonshine yeah, according to Japanese law. So the, tele the TV stations had to apologize for that. And it was, it was a big scandal from that. So that's a fun fact about legislation in Japan. Besides the requirements for home brewing, uh, there aren't very many legal regulations when it gets to umeshu. Um, if you want to call your umeshu honkaku umeshu, it has to actually contain plums. Uh, there are products made with like chemical substitutes, but I've never had one and I hope I never will. I'm not too curious about that. Umeshu, very approachable, delicious product. Uh, if you get your hands on a bottle, do get it. There's actually even Umeshu Day in Japan and it's celebrated on the June 10th. And this is where normally the rainy season starts and when the plums are harvested, the fourth I understand. That's all for today. I hope you enjoy your, today's video, guys. Uh, don't forget to press the subscribe button down there and the like, of course. And uh, I'll see you next week. Tsukare sama desu.